That's really interesting. So Chewie's actually Ray's father. Huh. Yeah. I've yeah. seen that coming. No, yeah, I know. Huh. It's, oh. oh. Hey guys, please welcome Kathleen Kennedy to the show. I want to say first off, thank you so much for coming by. I know you're incredibly busy with all of the stuff going on in our galaxy. Can you give me a quick update of what it is that you've been up to? It's been pretty great. We literally just finished what was Red Cup and we now know as Solo, uh -huh. which Ron Howard just announced recently. And we're right on the verge of releasing The Last Jedi. Right, The Last and Jedi. And that is something we're incredibly excited about and I think the fans are getting excited. I mean, we are definitely getting into The Last Jedi season right now mm -hmm. and the hype is definitely growing. What was it like working on that production? You know, I have to say Ryan Johnson is, I don't have enough accolades to say about him. And I know he's been on the show and yeah. I loved watching his interview because that's so much Ryan. He just had amazingly good time every single day. He's such a huge fan. I mean, from the times that I've talked to Ryan, he's just such a genuinely excited, interested person. And it seemed like he had kind of his whole roadmap out from the beginning. He did. He wrote the script, which I, I'm sure a lot of people don't necessarily realize. I think it's something that he thought about a long time before he ever put pen to paper. And then he went off. I remember he's in a driving snowstorm up in the mountains, putting the final touches on the script. And then he came back just bubbling over with ideas and excitement. So he has this interesting way that he works where he needs that time alone. And then he's so incredibly collaborative when he comes into the process of making a movie. That's fantastic. It sounds like it was a really good working relationship, yeah. a lot of fun. Really great. Awesome. What would you say excites you the most about The Last Jedi? You know, I think he's done an exceptional job of taking these new characters and some of the legacy characters and moving us to this next place. I think he doesn't answer all the questions. I will say that up front. But Good. there are certain questions he does answer in a really wonderfully provocative way. And I think there'll be some surprises that people aren't expecting. Now, one of the things that fans have been really excited about are the creatures. I mean, we're always into creatures and droids. Would you say that you are Team Porg or Team Crystal Foxes? You know, Porgs are the cutest thing on the face of the earth. I can't believe Ryan created these wonderful little creatures. But this, the Crystal Foxes are very, very mysterious, and I'd have to go with the Crystal Foxes. Yes! Those those are mine. I love those guys. I love yeah. them so much. I can't and they, wait to see. And tinkling sound. And, yeah, so cool. And it's great. unlike anything we've ever seen before. Yeah, yeah. Very magical. I think that's what's so unique about what Ryan has brought to this. He just has such an incredibly fertile imagination. There's a, a brief little moment in The Last Jedi where there's a, a little porg, and then there's a little baby porg next to the pork. If it's there's the anything thing. cuter than a pork, it has to be a baby a pork. A baby pork. Oh my yeah. gosh, I can't uh, wait to see. It doesn't get better than that. <laughs> <laughs> baby pork. So moving on to Solo, even though untitled Han Solo film was really starting to grow on me. Now we've got Ron Howard on, yeah. on the set and you know he's no stranger to Lucasfilm having directed Willow, but you guys have never worked together, right? No, we've never worked together, but we've known each other a long time. And I think what Ron brought to the movie has just been wonderful. And he's so good with actors mm -hmm. because that's something he's done his entire life. You know, we've had a lot of fun following along with Ron's, you know, Instagram and Twitter posts from set. Cause I mean, it reminds us a lot of George's transmissions from the prequel sets that he did yeah. starwars.com. And it goes such a long way in making the community feel up to date and yeah. tied in. I think that that's so true. I think there is a secrecy about what we do and that's something we want to preserve and we do that for ourselves, we do that for the fans. But there is also the, a real importance of letting people have an inside look as to what we're doing and experience yeah. the fun of what we're doing. And I think Ron really captured that and had fun with it. And at the same time, we love the exchange that we get to have. And that's what the fans have come to expect, yeah. is to have that kind of exchange where they can rely on the fact that we're going to play along. And it's really powerful in fostering our community, which mm -hmm. I mean, it's really become such a family thing and, and bridges all of these different generations. And one of the things that I've been also really close to is Rebels and like or whatever, mm -hmm. what our animation department's doing and bridging that gap. How important would you say the contributions of, you know, Dave Filoni and the animation team are well, to building the saga in this era? I mean, Rebels is really what kicked off the new generation of Star Wars for the company. And I think that what Dave 
Dave Filoni and his team have done is just amazing. I don't think there's any surprise that they were nominated for an Emmy. Right? It's um, just gotten better work. and better every yeah. season. Yeah. I'm kind of sad that it's coming to a close. Yes, but I think everybody is. But now we're moving on to new things. Another awesome title that they've been working on is Force of Destiny, which is mm. something that's completely different yeah. than we've done in the past. What kind of focus is there, you know, behind the scenes on making sure that there's something for everybody? I think there's a huge focus. I think that's what's interesting about Rebels, the decision to do Forces of Destiny. The way we look at the difference in the movies that we're making, it is something that we talk about in terms of a broad spectrum mm -hmm. with the audience. And this has always been a generational brand. It's important to us that there are things for younger kids to carry forward and something that parents can go to with their kids. And having that kind of family interaction, that's the wonderful thing about Star Wars. It's for everybody. It's so special. Yeah. And there's tons of new things going mm -hmm. on. I mean, between books and comics and movies and games and you know animation and products even, like there's so much going on right now with Star Wars. I have a hard time keeping up with it. How do you keep up with it? <laughs> People ask that all the time. And I have such an amazing team at Lucasfilm. Every single person that is in charge of all these different areas. The great thing is, number one, they're a fan. And secondly, they strive for excellence. And that is the thing that I find continually, whether we're making a movie, we're working on a book, we're working on toys, we're looking at even innovative technology where we're now getting into our X-Lab work oh, yeah. that we're doing, whether it's just sitting on the set talking to the ILMers about the new technology that we're using. Every single movie is pushing excellence. And I think that's rare, you yeah. know? It's, it's an amazing thing to be involved with something like Star Wars where almost every single person that's making a contribution in whatever it is we're creating, they're doing their best work. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty incredible. And they care passionately about what they're doing. I mean, and that just is a stamp of excellence just on Lucasfilm and on ILM in general. Mm -hmm. What is it about this company do you think that keeps us pushing boundaries and creating new things for 40 years now? Well, clearly the foundation that George Lucas created is exceptional. And I think because George was a bit of a maverick and he was a risk taker. He didn't see that as a negative at all. He felt that pushing those boundaries was important. And I think the great thing is inside of Star Wars, where else are you gonna continue that kind of thinking where you can push the boundaries, take risks? And that's something that I think is very much our core value. We wanna keep pushing things, but at the same time doing excellent work. It's not just traditional media, it's experiences. We're moving into the parks with Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. We are so excited by that because, again, we can take innovation inside of live experiences, right. inside of what we think of as a park setting combined with what you might see in a movie theater. Right, and being completely immersive. I mean, when we were at D23, they had the autonomous droid. Yes. You know, there's going to be things in that park that they completely transport you into mm -hmm. Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Being able to combine with the efforts of ILM and the innovation that goes on inside this company, the combination of that talent will create an immersive experience in the parks like nothing anybody has ever really witnessed before. So there's some really in interesting innovation going on inside this company. Yeah. Where we started with The Void, which is Secrets of the Empire is what it's being called. And I just went through this and it is so cool. It's in a different tool in storytelling. And by telling stories differently, you'll experience stories differently. And that's exciting. All these lines are kind of blurring. It's the way we look at games. Like for instance, we're doing Battlefront. You get to have this first person narrative driving the game and the environments are every bit as good as a lot of things that you see in movies. All of these things are merging these platforms in a way that I, I just think it's, it's not disruptive, it's exciting. <laughs> 
that makes me really want to mention the story group. They've been working so hard the past couple of years to make sure everything that comes out of here is cohesive. What kind of process do you have working with them? You know, we're sitting down now, we're talking about the next 10 years of Star Wars stories, and we're looking at narratively where that might go. Future stories beyond episode nine with these new characters, Ray, Poe, Finn, BB-8. But we're also looking at working with people that are interested in coming into the Star Wars world and taking us to places that we haven't been yet. And that's exciting too, because it's a vast galaxy far, far away. Right. So the possibilities, the are, possibilities are endless. Awesome. Yeah. I talked to Dave a lot about what he learned from George. I always find that really interesting. Do you have any lessons that you took from George that you know really govern how you approach your, your work? Yeah, I, I think the lesson I've always taken from George is be bold and take risks. I think that um, the thing that George never did was maintain the status quo. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really important because this business, especially now, things are changing so fast yeah. that you can't get stuck in doing the same thing. And I think that that's the exciting thing inside the Star Wars universe is, you know, we have this incredibly loyal fan base. We have an amazing amount of talent. And the worst thing we could do is to keep doing the same thing. If you had to leave one lesson for your successor, or for Star Wars going forward, or for Lucasfilm going forward, what would you say that is? Work out, be healthy, and have stamina. <laughs> and with that, I need to go to the gym. Cool, because <laughs> I haven't been in weeks.